I just want to say it is a blessing to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I'll go ahead and I'll read a portion of the scripture. Here. I'll go ahead and read a portion of the scripture, which was already read. I won't take us through all of it, but I'll just read uh, starting at verse 15. And that was in Romans chapter 5. Um, our deacon read starting at 12, but I'll read starting at verse 15 uh, right now, just in the interest of uh, time. But the free gift was not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the free gift is not like the result of that of one man's sin. For the judgment followed one, one trespass brought co condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, and much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Now the law came to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also may reign through the righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you for this service so far. God, I want to thank you for bringing us through the first half of the year. And although all may not have been perfect, we can stand here confidently that it is only because of your grace and mercy that has brought us through. And God, as we approach the second half, dear God, Lord, we approach it in the same confidence that you will continue to carry us. You will continue to keep us, and you will continue to empower us for the journey ahead. Lord, as I go in and I stand before you humbly to proclaim your word, God, I ask that you remove me, God, and that your people hear and see you in this moment, dear God. Lord, let this word come through, dear God, where it can pierce hearts that may be hurting right now. Let this word come through where it can break away at any unforgiveness that may be taken out, housed in our hearts. God, let this word come through, dear God, where it will just heal all hurts, Lord. Let your people leave here knowing that they have not heard from me, but they have heard from you. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you and I ask you to continue to strengthen and keep me in this moment. Lord, I ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is the week leading up to the 4th of July. And this is a time where no matter the, the background, no matter the socioeconomic status, no matter where you started your journey to get to this country, people will unite as family, as friends, as citizens, and they will celebrate the events marking our country's independence. We come together and celebrate as inhabitants of this land, the United States of America. It may be marked by listening to music, marked by eating hot dogs and hamburgers, beverages and other activities that people enjoy at this time. And then as nightfall hits, many will enjoy beautiful firework displays with patriotic music playing in the background. And then there are some who may just decided to take, decide to take the milder side of the celebrations 
and they may find themselves at home just relaxing and maybe watching the fireworks on TV. But whatever you choose, there is no confusing that on the 4th of July, that is the day that is set aside for our country to celebrate its independence. That's the day that we designate to celebrate the day that the Founding Fathers took a stance and through the Declaration of Independence decided once and for all they would end the oppressive authority that was ruling over them and making life difficult. You know, this is also a day, though, that many don't feel as united in these states as they ought to. It is important, though, as we celebrate that there are many who still feel cast aside. There are many who still feel disenfranchised. And there are many who still feel unempowered. But it is important, no matter the various issues that we are facing in this country, we have to remember that as believers, no matter how divided our country stands, that we must remember that our unity is not found in this country, but it is found in the victory that Christ won for us that day on the cross and through his resurrection. And in our passage today, as we're going through our first hit in our sermon series, our passage focuses on Paul as he continues to discuss our justification as believers through faith and faith alone. And as we move into this passage, Paul begins to contrast Jesus and Adam, who's the first human being. And Paul focuses on the fact that through Adam's disobedience, sin entered the world. See, Adam was given instruction by God and Adam disobeyed God. And so with this disobedience to God came sin and eternal death into the world. But Romans 5:12 puts it this way saying that so death spread to all men because all men had sin. You see because as humans as descendants of Adam we inherited his sinful nature, but we didn't just inherit it, we also became active participants because Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we all disobeyed, we all missed the mark, and we were classified as sinners. And with sin came the consequences of separation from God came eternal death and su um, suffering. And it goes on to say that as the law came, that the law in itself was not intended to save us. We could not be made right with God by keeping the law. But verse 15 is the good news. Verse 15 is where we celebrate. See, verse 15 says, but the free gift. And repeated in this passage, it repeats the free gift. And see, there's a reason why free gift is stated. Because we have a culture right now where we want to walk around and talk about what we've earned and what we've done and the wealth that we've attained. And so if I can do it, why can't you do it too? But see, our word says where you stand today is but through the free gift of God. You didn't earn it, you couldn't buy it, your portfolio can't obtain it. This is only done through the grace of God. Amen. And it said that the free gift is not like the trespass. It said for many died because of one man's trespass, but it said that many more have the grace of God and the free gift by grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded many. See, there's only one way into reconnection with God. There's no other plan but through Jesus Christ 
to which we gain entrance to walk in this grace. See, we were talking on Thursday night about division in the new believers and that how the Judaizers believe that the, the new Gentiles needed to become circumcised and keep the law of Moses in order to be considered believers. And see, as they met, and as they began to look at the work of the Holy Spirit, not only in Jews, but also in the Gentiles, Acts 15 said in response, but we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus as they will. So it was establishing there's only one way that you can come in and be reconnected to God. And that one way that you come in is through grace. It's through the free gift that God offered when he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. When he sent his perfect son to save an imperfect people. And as Jesus came into the world, he defeated sin, which had entered the world again through Adam's disobedience. But by his obedience, not only did he become the access point, but he became the life raft that was thrown out to many who were sinking deep in sin. We who confessed with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died and rose on the third day, we walk into this free gift of salvation. And see, we, it's important that we recognize because there's many things that happens in the world that offers us a free gift. I remember as we brought up Morgan today, I made one of my worst mistakes behind a free gift. I was on my way to class. That's why my mother sent me to Morgan, to go to class. But there was a table set out with all these cool prizes. It was a free gift. And all I had to do was stop and fill out an application and I was going to get a free gift. Well, that application was for a Discover credit card. And let me tell y'all, that thing became a thorn in my side. <laughs> See, and the world will offer us free gifts only to trap us in bondage in another way. The world will offer you the glitz and the glam only to trap you another way. Just as an aside, because I don't want to give my personal opinion from the pulpit, but I passed the dispenser, marijuana dispenser is, it became legal yesterday, and the rhyme was wrapped around the corner, and I said, Lord, the free gift that's going to trap people into a lifestyle that they don't know what awaits them. I pray for the day that the line wrapped around the church would look just like that building looked yesterday. But I only say this to say the world would offer you what appears free, but church, it ain't free. But I'm here to tell you today that when God sent his son, when Jesus stepped out of his throne and, and came to earth, he offered himself as a free gift to reconnect with God. And there was no bondage that was held. Matter of fact, the free gift that was found in Christ was to break the bondage of sin. It was to break Satan's hold over our lives. And it was to free us up to serve and worship a God who has always loved us and cared for us. Even in our darkest moment, God loved us and offered us his best in his son, Jesus Christ. And see, God saw us in our darkest moments. He saw us at our most dirty moments spiritually. Yet, as our meditation hymn said, he knew that we were worth saving. He knew that we were worthy of the free gift of salvation, which had been bought to set us free. And when we turn from sin and turn to Christ, we take hold of the freedom and the independence that is found in Christ 
and Christ alone. We take hold of the very thing that was won on the cross that day. We take hold of futures when he turned to the thief on the cross and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. And there's a day held for each of us that because of the victory Christ won for us, we too will join him one day in paradise. Christ has broken sin's authority over our lives and we have been spiritually reborn. And Christ offers us the invitation and the access to a life that we didn't earn. Back to the Father. A life that we don't deserve because we've sinned. Verse 21 says, so just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead. See, it's saying that death has been defeated, giving us right standing with God, resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is why we celebrate. This is the freedom that we celebrate that Christ has won for us. So I'm not saying that the 4th of July isn't a great thing, but church, we don't have to wait till the 4th to celebrate our independence. We don't have to wait for the fireworks to blast to celebrate our independence. I offer to you today, every time God's put breath in your lungs, celebrate your independence. Every time you've seen him answered prayer in your life, Celebrate your independence every time you can choose living for him and not going back from where he's brought you. Celebrate your independence every day, whether you feel like it, whether you have depression and you can't move any further, but you take a step confident believing that God's going to heal your body and your mind. You celebrate your independence in Jesus Christ. And see, because Paul goes on as he goes into, as Romans chapter 6 goes on. And it says, for we died and were buried with Christ in baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead, the glorious power of the Father, now also we, I'm sorry, now we may also live new lives. Romans 6 and 7 goes on to say, and since we have been united with him in his death, it says that we will also be raised to life as he was. It says we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ, is that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin, for we died with Christ. We were set free from the power of sin. Christ has set us free, church, and that is the freedom in which we walk in every day. We ought to celebrate and not a day should go by where we don't thank God for all that he's done on our behalf. Church, this not only was done to reconnect us and unite us in Christ, reconnecting us back to God, but this also works horizontally where we are also connected to each other as one unified collective body. I guess I'll go ahead and give my title right now. It's the perfect light display. It's the perfect light display. So as we sit back and think about our lives today, as believers united in the work of Christ, we must never forget what it took to get us here. It was Christ's obedience that reversed the curse that was over all of our lives. It was in Christ's disobedience I'm sorry, it was in Christ's obedience that the disobedience that ruled on the earth was done away with and defeated. 
And again, I'm going to say this because it goes back to what's going on in our world. We didn't earn it. This is not something that gets us legacy because our parents has committed to Christ. This is not something we can purchase for ourselves. It is only by the grace of God purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. This is why we have this table before us. This is why Christ gave the commandment to do this as often as you eat or drink. Do it in remembrance of me because we will never be able to walk around and become entitled Christians. We can never walk around and say, I didn't know what it took to get us here because every time we partake in this, we remember the one that gave it all so we could live today. It was Christ who liberated us. There's a song that we often play in our services that I think really captures this moment of what we're focusing on today. I don't sing, so I have to say it. But the song is called Marvelous, and every time I hear it, I get it. It says, you gave that I might live. It said, you gave that I might be set free. It said, exchanged your life for mine. What a marvelous thing you've done. And then it goes and it repeated again and it says, you gave that I might live. You gave that I might be set free exchanged your life for mine. What a marvelous thing you've done. See, once we understand that that's the marvelous thing that was done, we don't celebrate like the world celebrates. We understand independence and unity in a way that's different from what this world is trying to present to us as unity and independence. We understand that it's not just independence for a select few, but God has sent us out there to set free all who hears his message. It is Christ who's done the work. Yesterday, I was at home and I was awaiting to go see the fireworks. And then all of a sudden, the storms rushed in. Back to back storms, back to back storms. And I had given up on the fact that there were going to be fireworks tonight. But just as darkness then began to fall on the sky, the rain stopped. And I looked up and I said, oh, the fireworks are going to be back on. And despite the rains, despite the storms, despite the winds, despite the darkness that was all over, I stood outside at, um, right across from the Bank of America and I saw one of the most beautiful fireworks display yesterday. And I had a wonderful time seeing the fireworks as they shot up in the sky. But I'm here to tell you today, church, it is not the fireworks that sets us apart as believers. It is not the fireworks that makes God applaud at what we are doing down here. It is the fire that he sent that is in in work in each of us and how we move out to care for one another, how we move out to love one another. That's the fire that God wants to see at work in each of our lives. So we should be the fireworks display in spite
spite of the storms that come before us, God wants to see the fire at work in you. In spite of the darkness that tries to fall upon you, God wants to see the fire in work in you. God wants you to display the unity that was born, that is in Christ, that we are all connected. See, we have his Holy Spirit in each of us, which lets each of us know that we belong to Christ. And John, 1 John 4, I'm sorry, 1 John 4, 11 through 12 tells us, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. And if we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Well, church, I offer you today, when you step out and show love instead of hate, you are exhibiting the perfect light display. When you lift up another brother or sister who's hurting, you are displaying the perfect light display. Church, when we walk out of here unified, making sure that everybody knows that they belong in this place, when everybody knows that there's no outcast in this place, when we walk out of here and everybody knows you belong here, I don't care where you came from, I don't care where you hailed from, I don't care if you're naturalized by birth, I don't care if you came and you took a test, this right here, you belong here in this church. And when we show Christ's love brightly, we exhibit the perfect light display. Thank you, church. Have a great day.